Good morning, everybody. Professor Nelson Sawakamu, thank you for inviting me to this trained audience. Yeah. <laughs> I do not know. Usually I meet people I know very well, but most of you are strangers to me. Um, Dr. David Okello, a retired civil servant, retired from the UN operations. I was working for WHO for almost 20 years. I just came back. And I'm now seated at ACHES, which is the African Center for Global Health and Social Transformation. I did there, I'm looking after issues of NCDs and uh, healthy aging. Before that, I used to work with Nelson. I also used to do a lot of research before I joined WHO. So I sat on the research bench like yourselves, and then in the last 20 years or so, I have been sitting on the side of the policy makers, really interacting with policy makers at headquarter levels, ministries of health, and so on. So I'm going to give you some ideas maybe from both sides, from the research side as well as from the policymaker side. I, I really like some of the presentations we were, which were made here. The school back story is quite illuminating and uh, some of the issues that came out there, I will touch on them. Mainly looking at the issues of the interaction between the policymaker and the researcher. What are the challenges? opportunities. Let me start here. The, the issue of getting research into policy and what I call grip is, is uh, our headache, it's our nightmare, it's perhaps the theme of your, your discussions here. Uh, and there are mainly three types of policy, of research. The research initiated by the research researchers. Sometimes research is initiated by the policy maker himself. He comes to you and says, I want to find an answer to this. Or the project is directed specifically at looking at getting research into policy. And this could be done by, by both, both teams, by the researcher as well as the policy maker. If you want to improve policy, you want evidence for improving policy making. There are probably four strategies you could use. First, the policy maker and, the, and stakeholders are seeking evidence. And it's, it's a, a bilateral discussion. We're looking for evidence. If both of you agree, probably what you find will be used. But also strategy two is involving stakeholders in designing the objectives of the research themselves. We walk, up, walk with them through designing the objectives and so on, and probably what you find out will be immediately taken up. Also, strategy number three is facilitating policy maker researcher engagement. <coughs> Best ways of using research findings to influence policies facilitate that process and, and really uh, this is not usually common but your, your example really fits into this. You really are busy <coughs> facilitating that, that discussion. And the fourth strategy would be active dissemination of your findings. Many times researchers do research and they just take it to Professor Sarangamo and they want their qualification they don't tell anybody about their findings. And, and those strategies, as I go along, please remember them. Now, what are some of the challenges for utilizing research into policy, health policy in particular? There are a number, but allow me to mention a few. First, addressing the capacity of the policy maker to demand evidence. Many times the policy maker, the minister, the MPs, they say they know what to do. 
uh, experience. They don't demand, and that's a challenge. If they don't demand for evidence, there's no way you can you are going to impress them. Secondly, communication between the researcher, the policy makers, the donors, and so on is very poor. If you are not communicating, then whatever the researcher is doing will not make sense. Also, and we forget this, politics. We really need to know that politics can unblock you or block your research. If the political process is not conducive to whatever you are saying, you will go nowhere. And politics sometimes design what kind of actions need to be taken. Decentralization processes here, Kenya and so on, I don't know how much of it was based on research. Sometimes it's just a political pressure and not evidence from research. And that is something I think all of us should bear in mind. There's also lack of willingness of some policy makers to, to use evidence for their decisions and they are resistant to change. They don't want to change the world status quo, and that resistance is very, very common. But for me, the greatest challenge that is, is that research is only one input to be considered by policymakers. Do not imagine that it's only your evidence that influences what they do. Forget. There are so many other things. Some of it politics, some of it personal experience, some of it ideology, ideological issues. Research is just one leg of evidence that will reinforce them. What policymakers have told me, behind everything else they said, if they, if they have a good evidence, it will reinforce mm -hmm. other issues that they take into account. So bear this in mind, this one I put in red, is extremely important. Now, what are some reasons for failure to take up research evidence by decision makers? They have so many issues, but these are some of them attempt to focus research questions so that a clear and crisp answer can be provided. We narrow the research question so much, whereas the policymaker takes a lot of issues that I have explained. Their personal interests, their ideology, their values, opinions are never taken into account. But you narrow your research question so much and that may work against you. Decision makers are not sensitive to the incentives that drive your research. You know, for you, you want to attract grants, you want to publish in peer review journals. Come on, this is not that red and better. Your agenda is completely different. And many times, the results are not responding to current issues before government. The policy that government wants to make is now, is current. Your research is talking about many things that are not urgent today. And I think as we do the, as we do research, we should be aware of this point. The issues that government is grappling with must be in your agenda. And researchers are really taking into account different audiences. There are many audiences that we should pay attention to. It's not just Ministry of Health headquarters. It could be a local government issue. It could be a community issue. And all those things, you need to address them. And researchers many times produce <coughs> scientific evidence that is not always tailor-made for application in different contexts. These are some of the arguments that I have personally experienced and you may find that useful. But my real big personal experience is the research to policy linkages, in my view, have been very weak. And you will be frustrated as a researcher. Not everything you think is great science, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, is going to be taken up as bread and butter. It is a frustrating exercise. And please don't be frustrated. I have discovered that sometimes what you see as very strong evidence, very current, may be put aside 
for years and 10 years later, some new permanent secretary comes and picks your message and says, ah, 20, in 2010, somebody did a research like this, and then they, they pick it up. So don't be frustrated. You, if you're doing a good thing, it may not be taken up today, but somebody will bump, bump onto it. But this is a frustrating exercise. Yes, of course, your agenda is getting grants, getting publications, getting promotion. Fine, but the politics of getting your finding the policy is, is a different ballgame. There are many factors responsible for long uptake of research by policymakers. Sometimes the, the quality of your research is not very good. It can be challenged. Also, generally weak and unreliable research institutions. If you're doing your research from Busitema University, nobody knows about it probably they will not take your result. And if you, if, uh, where did you build result, this result? Oh, I did it in my career. Oh, my career, we know my career. This must be a good result. Bear this in mind. And sometimes you have to create collaboration with institutions that are already known, or researchers that are already known, and people will warm up to them a little better. There's also sometimes a part disconnect between the researcher and the policymaker, and I have keep to repeat in this point, whatever, if you want your research findings to be taken up, you must get closer to the policymaker. And bridging the gap between research, research teams and policymakers is, is something we have not worked on very well. Many times you call a one-day meeting, a workshop, you say, ah, I have disseminated my meeting in a workshop, Come on, a one-day workshop will not change people. This is the type of work we like doing. And also, we we'll call a meeting with the peers and so on. One day, and you say, now they know about my research. Come on, this is a job. Please, we need to do a much better, uh, uh, you know, uh, exercise in doing this. So, my suggestions for the way forward, I can see these people saying I should stop now. First, importantly, Trust building is critical for translating research into policy. If people don't trust you, people will not trust your results. Informal meetings provide opportunity to network with policymakers. Do not only wait for the policymakers in a one-day workshop. You need to have informal discussions with them all along and have a working relationship. Researchers should engage with the media. Somebody talked about the media earlier. The media is the voice of the people. The media is your bridge to the population, to the community. Sometimes we fear the media, but how are you going to reach out to people? If your research is going to influence anything, if the people know about it, the people will make noise for you. You don't need to, if they know about it, like you did with your media publication, New Vision and so on, you don't need to talk, they will talk for you. Identify current knowledge gaps for policy making and target your research to address the current knowledge gap in policy. If your research is just an academic exercise, do not blame anybody if it's not taken up. Above all, endeavor to ensure that you address the issue of timeliness and relevance of your finding, production of credible and trustworthy reports, close personal contact with the policymaker, and please summarize your findings and present key actionable recommendations. Sometimes your findings are written in medical jargons that nobody will understand. You need to summarize them and work with people who can help you to summarize your findings if you want them to be taken up. These are my ideas. I don't know if they're useful, but they're based on my personal experience in this, in this uh, endeavor. Thank you very much.